I think that to ground your morality in, certainly in the Bible, would be an appalling thing to do. If you actually look at the Bible, if you look at, look at any of the moral, almost any of the moral lessons you can take from it. And some of the things Jesus said are very nice, but, but you have to pick and choose your way through. And, and, and um, setting aside Jesus' um, emphasis on loving your neighbor, which is very nice, um, the Sermon on the Mount is, is very nice, the, the fundamental doctrine of, uh, well, the Old Testament, of course, is appalling, but even... Yeah, putting the Old Testament aside, yeah, putting in the that New aside, Testament. Even the New Testament, um, the, the idea that we're born in sin is a hideous idea. The idea that, that the only way to be saved from sin and the wages of sin is, is Jesus' death um, is a hideous idea. And it's, I don't think it's one that Jesus himself ever put forward, is it? I, I, I think he probably would, would, would be rather shocked at that, at that thought. Well, I imagine that Jesus would have to be aware of himself as the salvation. And if that's the case, he'll need to be aware of what he's saving people from, which can only be something like slavery to sin. Now, I course, wonder whether you're re reading something in there. I mean, salvation... Um, I mean, he said things like... If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said that kind of thing. But but did did he actually say that he was salvation? Well, I suppose I am the way, the truth, and the oh, life. Yeah, but that, no that one comes unto the I, Father I except am, through I me. I am a guide for a good a good life, something like that. It doesn't mean that that he surely never said that my death is necessary in order for you to be saved from sin. Quite possibly. Um, I mean, I think about the the idea of the Eucharist and the Last Supper, and and literally. Uh, breaking up you know, my body for you. It, it does seem to be uh, some indication that Jesus knew what he was doing if the, if the Christians are correct about his mission on earth. A moment ago, you said it's an appalling idea that we're all born in sin. And I understand this intuition, but do you not think there's some wisdom in this idea or, or some sort of necessary humility uh, in, in recognizing that you know, we all do seem to fall short of the standards that we set for ourselves. That is, we're not going to make sense of a concept like sin, because we don't believe in God, you know, we're, we're atheists, sin doesn't make sense. But even just in terms of our own moral standards, whatever standards we set for ourselves, we seem to fall short of these every single day. And is it not just that idea that's being captured when somebody says, look, even even by your own standards, you're you're falling short of where you should be. And may, maybe that's what... Even a newborn baby, we should born take in sin? Well... I would probably respond by saying that not all Christians will say that a newborn baby is born in sin in the sense that they're responsible for it, more like born with a propensity towards sinning, which I imagine you would even agree with, that, that newborn babies, although they haven't you know, committed immoral acts yet, they're born with this sort of human nature which has a, a predisposition towards doing things that fall short of our moral standards, maybe. I'm sorry for you having to do a degree in this kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, it's not a real subject, is it? It's, we, you know, we talked about this before um, on on our previous podcast, and yeah. and I, I think it's something that you wanted to ask ask me about today, isn't it? I mean, we well, yes, I, I, um, it's obviously something that still interests you. Mm, oh, um, certainly, talking yeah. about you know sin and things like that. Um, I I cannot imagine spending three years. How did you stand it? I'll answer it in two ways. The first is to say that the theology faculty was actually theology and religion. So I was able to study religion as anthropology, religion as history. You know, you can do papers in okay, that science would be and religion, this, this kind yeah. of thing. And I imagine you would be, yeah. you'd be very interested in that kind yes. of thing. Theology itself I found useful for a, for a few reasons. One of them, uh, and it, you know, uh, of course there's like a crude sense in which by studying theology it helps me to debate it, it helps me to argue with people. Uh, but, I get that, definitely. But it's it's also an interesting window into human psychology. For example, you know, clearly the the question does interest you. Why is it that people can 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 believe so strongly and so easily in this idea that everybody's born in sin? Yes, isn't, that isn't is that interesting. Evil? But, isn't but that horrible? It, it, that's a psychological question. And if if you, I don't know what sort of essays you had to write, but if you were allowed to write an essay on that. That would have been interesting if you were allowed to ask a question, uh, how can anyone believe this stuff? Hmm. Um, but I imagine you had to actually write a serious essay on the concept of sin itself and the idea of redemption and the idea of, 
atonement. Well, suppose you wanted to to write that that essay, which which you just said was an interesting question. Why would anybody believe this? Well, in order to answer that, you you have to get to grips with the reasons people have yes. for believing it. Yes. Yes. And I suppose that's what I'm do- doing here with you in saying, when when because you bring up the point when you look at the New Testament, you you bring up this this uh, exegesis, this interpretation. This is an evil text because it tells people that they're born in sin. And I suppose the question implicitly in what you're saying there is, how can you believe this? And I'm doing that devil's advocate thing again of, of trying to, I suppose, explain why it is that somebody might believe this and say that even an atheist might recognize that there's a sense in which that's at least poetically true. We're all born in a state where we are unable to fulfill the standard that we want yes. to fulfill. You know what yes. I mean? Um, poetically, uh- Yes, I suppose it. I suppose you could see it at a, at a poetic level. Um, it, interestingly, I don't know whether I've told you this before, but but um, when the Selfish Gene was published, both the chaplains of my college came up to me and said they, they'd read it and they they thought it had echoes of original sin, hmm. um, and it was a poetic it was a poetic resonance with, with original sin. Um, hmm. And I suppose I mean that's quite interesting. Why, why would the selfish gene have a, a resonance with original oh, sin? Um, well, uh, they they were thinking of it in terms of the uh, the selfish gene um, uh, having um, a sort of primitive rationale for selfishness. So that's not what the book was really intended to be about, but that's how they interpreted yes. it, and so that, that 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 resonated with their idea of original sin. And what do you make of the criticism in the opposite direction? Somebody says, you know. I've spent my life uh, studying Thomistic metaphysics. I, I'm I'm a I'm a classical theologian. I've got a PhD, and I looked in the God Delusion, and I wanted to see what Richard Dawkins had to say about Thomas Aquinas's five proofs for the existence, his five ways to for, to establish the existence of God, and they find two pages, and this this sort of pinnacle of religious philosophy as they see it has a treatment in two pages yes. and and when when they question you and say well what about all of the the important theological nuances you respond to them well why would i do theology theology is uninteresting i think i would say to that why privilege christian theology when there are thousands of gods all around the world they all have their own theology and these uh thomist theologians are equally ignorant of aboriginal uh, theology and and Bantu theology and and Papua New Guinea theology. That's true. Um, and th- they think that their theology is somehow high flown and intellectually important, but it has no greater status than any of those. The thing about science is that it's universal. Mm. It, it 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 is not local. It's not it's not tied to any particular tribe or group of people or or um, time in history. It's what you discover in science is universal and timeless. I think that's fair enough. But then I also think that if one of these Thomistic metaphysicians wrote a book called The Aborigine Delusion, or, or they, they tried to sort of write a chapter where they said, <coughs> I'm, I'm going to debunk this idea, and then they spent two pages on it. The delusion that I'm interested in is the very existence of a supernatural creator. It's right. not particularly Chris- Christianity. In, in so far as I talked about Christianity, that's because I, um, I'm brought up in, 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 a, in a Christian culture. Mm. Um, but what really interests me is the existence of a divine creator at all. Mm. And I suppose you're allowed to say that in a different way, in a, where you say, well, I'm talking about Christianity because I was brought up in that culture. And people will say, fair enough, that's what you chose to write in. Whereas a Christian, if they say... Well, I, I focus on Christianity because I was brought up in a Christian culture. That seems to slightly well, undermine their yes. position. I mean, but, it, but if, if they use that as, as a reason for why they believe, that's and, a very different thing from my using it as a reason why I chose to t- talk about it as an example. Quite right. <laughs> if you liked that clip, then you'll love the full conversation, which you can watch right now by clicking just here. Go on.